Okay, it's setting up. I think there must be a Zoom setting. If it doesn't happen, oh, right? Yeah. Sorry, have you shown me the text? Oh, okay. Good. Okay. Remember password. Click on picture. What's going on? Okay. Password. Remember password. Okay. Oh, there we are. I think we are live. Yay. Okay. Let's um, go. So just a quick overview. So this is a teen case um, where uh, a dentist who's just started um, doing clear aligners, complete beginner in orthodontics, Dr. Shruti Saxena has just presented this wonderful case before Bosch, she hadn't done any orthodontics really, and this is clear aligner case. So we're presenting this case to me on one-on-one -on -one basis to talk about what we're gonna do and look at her Invisalign treatment plan. So great photos, um, you know, can we go to the next slide please? Um, and yeah, so you can see a very well done summary, beautiful smile shot, very symmetrical, ears projecting equally to both sides. Um, you know, you can see her upper midline slightly off to the right. I trust this photo a lot because you can see the ears are quite um, similar when they project. So it's taken quite symmetrically with eyes um, looking at the horizon, which is a natural head position and uh, slightly narrow buckle corridors. You can see, you know, um, uh, not much gingival di display. Um, okay, let's go to the next one, please. And then here's your, her profile, convex. And I love how Dr. Shruti recognized it's normal for her age, which is true. Um, she's almost mesofacial, but cephalometrically, she looked tiny bit dolico, but not bad. She's got normal overjet overbite. Let's go to the next one, please. So here's the photos, um, class one on both sides. Um, apparently the patient was very difficult to photograph. So we've discussed, you know, other strategies of how uh, buckle shots could have been taken with a mirror. Um, and these are V-shaped retractors. Um, let's go to the next shot, please. We've got some estimate of crowding. Uh, it's pretty much a class one case with normal overjet overbite with uh, moderate crowding. So this is a case that we can think about borderline extraction, extraction, non-extraction. It can go anyway, actually. Um, so let's have a look at the next slide. Yeah, nice. Um, a nice um, occlusal shots, but we've got a V-shaped arch, which is very obvious with mild dental cross bites on one, two, and two, five. Um, I think the crowding estimate, which I did correct here, is a little bit more than we think. I think it's more moderate. It's not mild crowding in upper arch um, and lower is also moderate. Um, let's go to the next one, please. Um, OPG, nothing to note here. Um, third molar is developing and um, uh, nose ring, <laughs> obvious. Okay, let's go to the next one. What I love is, uh, okay, so cephalometrics, you can see she's a, a mildly uh, increased mandibular plane that's increased, but you know, mandible comes in all shapes and forms. And I sometimes think when we create these kind of classifications about curved bones, looking at them in profile and making them more linear, uh, it, it's actually quite dubious and it's not really how radiographers do. I think we're probably one of the only professions who sits there and draws lines and angles on all these bones, um, where, which are quite curvy, they're curved bones, you know, and we reduce them to two dimensional bones. Anyways, hallmark here, upper and lower incisor angles are normal. So hence we have to maintain them while we're alleviating the crowding. And let's just go to the next part. Um, and here is our treatment plan ideals. So we wanna maintain and accept the skeletal balance. We wanna correct the crowding and cross bites. We wanna maintain molars and canines. Incisor position is already pretty good. Um, we wanna maintain the incisal display on smiling, just to improve that one millimeter midline shift. Uh, buckle corridors can be improved slightly. Um, and that's it. So we were going to do, go to the next one, Shruti. Take on from here. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Um, so that's the diagnostic summary. So anterior posteriorly, um, she's class one molars and canines, and there's an upper midline sh shift of approximately one millimeter. Yes. Uh, and there's lower midline shift as well, yes. um, of approximately two millimeters to the right, and yes. overjet is two to three. Yes. 
yes. millimeters. Yes. Um, in vertical, um, she's got about 40 to 50 percent overbite. Mm -hmm. um, and in transfers, she's got narrow arch, uh, upper arch, and narrow buccal corridors. Yes. Dentally, um, there's crossbite, so there's palatally displaced 2, 5, um, 1, 2 is in crossbite, and there's crowding and mild rotations, and soft tissues are acceptable. Yes, love it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent summary. You know, actually, go back, one thing we missed, yeah. growth. Not that oh, growth yeah. matters here, because yeah. we're not utilizing her growth to correct the vertical, sagittal, yeah. or transverse in any way. Yeah. Yeah, but we could say she's pubertal or at the end of her pubertal growth spurt. Um, you know, it's it's a good good way because what we know is in in children, for example, or teens, teeth will move faster than adults. But that initial lag phase is less than children. It's just kind of nice to know, but actually, it's not as relevant here. But I would just add, she's in pubertal growth spurt or end of her pubertal growth spurt. Yeah, yeah, great. Thank you. Um, so this is the prioritized orthodontic problem list. So yeah. we've got class one dental malocclusion with class one skeletal base. Yes. Um, slight upper midline shift and there's lower midline shift. Then there's narrow upper arch. Significant displacement of two five. One two has cross bite and then there is um, overcrowding with mild to moderate overbite. And in terms of perceived complexities, um, uh, it's mainly the movement of 2-5, I think it's going to be complex because it's got to move a long way. And then um, we've got to rotate 2-4 and create space so 2-5 can move more um, buckly. And yeah, she's yeah. going to need lifetime retention. Yes, uh, that's very interesting to me. You said lifetime retention. Yeah. Can you tell me why? I mean, everybody is lifetime retention. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why particularly for her? Um, I think because of the um, uh, narrowness at the upper um, incisal area, the, the position of the upper incisors, um, I think although lower might be more stable because we're doing IPR, so that increases stability. Um, You've told me your treatment plan there. Yeah, so I was going to say, yeah. I think retention depends on our plan. Yeah. So if our plan was to, for example, um, retract incisors and not have movements that are buckly tipping yeah. um, or proclination of incisors that's against the soft tissue equilibrium, if that's disturbed, then definitely yeah. lifetime retention. But if yeah. we're looking at, um, you know, maintaining incisors as much as possible in their current positions, and uh, perhaps during expansion, it's still, yeah. you know, lifetime retention is there, yeah. enough, but not yeah. as critical. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's go to the next one. And um, so this is your treatment plan suggestion. Great. We're yeah. going to maintain incisal display. Yeah. We're going to improve buccal cord or upper arch. We'd love it. Improve midline, just the upper, right? So yes. So yeah. moving upper one millimeter. Yeah. It's very, yeah. very minimal. Um, yeah. I don't think she's got a deep bite. I think we decided we're going to maintain her overbite. It's, it's, not, yeah. it's not too bad. Yeah. You could actually. Okay. You could only yeah. a millimeter. It's only yeah. only deep by ten percent. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in fact, in children with uh, even end pubertal growth, but we have studies, long term studies that show overbite decrease with growth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but she's probably end of her facial growth, but improve crowding. Yeah, like that's moderate crowding. I think the biggest thing for us, how do we maintain everything? Perfect class one, perfect incisor angulation and resolve seven to eight millimeter crowding. Mm. Like that's the biggest thing. So yeah. let's go to the next one. Maintain half incisor mm. height too. I love it. <laughs> wow, this is what I want to see. That technician is going to go, what the? <laughs> uh, uh, Invisalign, look what's coming your way. <laughs> your technician's got to work hard, now, you know? <laughs> they got to look at yeah. every tick, 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 tick. Okay, what I love is you've thought about three dimensions here. So. Yeah. You thought transverse. Let's begin transverse. Yeah. What are we going to do? Yeah, so yeah. we've decided oh, we're not going to change skeletally anything. So we've decided, right? That was your aim. Yeah. We decided to do dental expansion then. And I love the two millimeter each side. Are you able to explain to me why two millimeters? Um, because um, first of all, uh, two millimeters is not going to happen. So there's going to be a shortfall. 
Yeah. Um, and um, but this is these are my original instructions. I did get a clean check back, and then I added a little bit more in the premolar area actually sure. um, because of the shortfall. Good. Good. Yeah. Good, good, yeah. good. You need that. Um, and this is just the basic draft of your first plan. Yeah. So yeah. Um, what I'm really getting at, why didn't you say three millimeters? Why didn't you say four? Why, why didn't you say one? Why two? Um, because um, I think because I my plan was to do expansion and IPR. So mm -hmm. just sort of working in, you know, coordination with, with that. I mm -hmm. thought that we'd start with two millimeters and see what the plan looks like. Um, and then we'll add more but I know because she's a teenager so we can push the expansion more as well and um, I think we, between this slide and the last slide what we just saw yeah. there's one slide missing and I think that is about all her different treatment options because we've yeah. jumped to a treatment yes yeah and you probably might have discussed with the patient and yes. you've decided this is the way I'm going to go however yeah. for our learning exercise it would be nice because she has a lot of options actually she's yeah. not slam dunk non-extraction easy yeah she's moderate crowding we've got to maintain everything so we've got treatment options number one no treatment yes. always yeah. an option okay yeah. um, what are the risks of no treatment um what would happen with incisor crowding what we know with age incisor crowding does increase yeah. the only risk she has probably she will have impacted third molars either ways um, yeah. and um you know, if her oral hygiene is good, I don't think no treatment's not a bad mm. option. They can't afford mm. it. No treatment's fine. I think number two, we're starting to think create space, right? Space, now, create yeah. space while maintaining everything that's almost perfect for moderate crowding. So where are we gonna get space from? There's there's what I know about five ways of creating space. Um, we look at uh, expansion across the maxilla and dental arch. Even if you did skeletal expansion the perimeter gain, the arch perimeter gain is, is not a lot, right? For every millimeter yeah. premolar expansion, Atkins and yeah. Nanda paper showed that is yeah. 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 millimeter. Yeah. So you have to do a lot of expansion to get a lot of um, space for that eight millimeter crowding. Yeah. So we're gonna use a combination here, right? The second way of alleviating crowding is um, IPR. You have to, again, how much can you take off per contact generally? can't i mean uh, even aggressive ipr you can get maximum two mils in the arch mm -hmm. then we have inside of proclination very powerful way of creating space for every millimeter of proclination you get almost a millimeter and um you know that powerful way is often used a lot and um however in this case she's so perfect yeah. you want to procline and then you have distillation but she's literally class one, class if we one. we're going to distillize everything right together which is also very complex um, and lastly is extraction. So she actually is borderline for everything. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, and when it comes to extractions, there's so many extraction patterns we can discuss with her. Mm. Uh, we could look at um, first premolars, all four. We could look at second premolars, all four. We can look at actually even second molars, okay? Mm. All four mm. second molars and let the eights drop in. Um, to help maintain an incisal angulation, the more posterior the extraction, uh, you still get a bit of space to alleviate crowding, but you don't get as much um, uh, biomechanical retraction. It's, you know, um, so so many when it even comes mm. to extraction for her. Mm. Um, I think if this was my patient, I would say I'm going to start non-extraction. Yeah. Using a combination of expansion and IPR possibly. Um, however, if in six to nine months I would take a CEF again, and if I thought incisors were proclining a bit further and I'm not happy yeah. with the incisor angulation and I've made it worse, I have a little likelihood to tell the parent I want to extract for premolars here or for second molars or something. Okay. Mm. Um, so um, this is, a, I love this case because the amount of treatment options you have here mm -hmm. and this is something that should be discussed because yeah. majority of the times we get away with it, but um, if we don't get away with it, you know, she might have a thick gingival biotype. We may not end up in recession with further proclination. 
you know, if we don't get away with it though, and you start to see any side effects, and this is where dental monitoring is fantastic with aligners, you'll pick up these issues very early week by week, and you can bring the patient in, you can take another set, a whole set of records and redesign and go for it. Mm -hmm. so I would be having this informed consent decision. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry I complicated it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's good. It's good. It's good learning. <laughs> okay, so I love yeah. now that we've decided we're going to do IPR expansion and start <laughs> non-extraction. <laughs> now I see your point. We're going to expand two millimeter. To be honest, yeah. she's quite V-shaped. She's quite narrow. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty percent of expansion doesn't happen that we build yeah. in the clean check. So I do even three millimeter. I do yeah. expansion more. Yeah, uh, I like the AP. You've already told them what to do. I like you've limited IPR to anteriors because it's you know easier to do actually yeah. really um, vertical. Okay, you want to intrude her lower anteriors. You don't have one in millimeters a lot actually. Mm. You don't need intrusion more than 0.5. Okay, yeah. Okay, and extrude or lower posterior. That's okay because there also this dental alveolar eruption. Um, but I think no more than 0.5 millimeter lower anterior extrusion, yeah. no more than 0.5 extrusion of the posteriors. Um, like it, attachments, love it. <laughs> um, then of course there's the clean check. So clean what check, I'm gonna yeah. do, I'm gonna stop the Facebook live because I think we have discussed so much in depth. And um, while we do that, can you just um, get your screen ready for us, the yeah. clean check, yeah? Yeah, stop.